Okay, speaking about light of the world gives me a chance to tell all my uh, light bulb jokes. Um, for instance, how many pessimists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Well, it doesn't really matter because they just figure the light bulb will just burn out again, so what's the point? How many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Speaking not particularly to you there, Rachel, but... Well, apparently it's only one, but the bulb has got to really want to change, okay? Um, for the computer people here, how many programmers does it take to screw in a light bulb? None, because that's a hardware problem, okay? How many ASIO operatives does it take to change a light bulb? Well, sorry, that information is classified top secret. And did you hear the story about President Trump changing a light bulb? Uh, apparently it was fake news. There we go. There's two Irishmen, and I'm telling this one because my ancestry is Irish, and I love these kind of jokes. So there's two Irishmen, we should call them Paddy and Mick, and they were building a rocket ship in their backyard, a rocket ship. And, and uh, Seamus leans over the fence and said, and what will you be doing with that? And Paddy said, we're going to fly to the sun. And don't be daft, said Seamus. You'll burn up if you do that. Oh no, said Mick, we'll be right. We're going to fly at night. Here we go. You see, the sun still shines whether it is night or not on earth. And the gospel, the good news of Jesus is true whether people believe it or not, whether people are open to it or are blind to it and in darkness. Or as John Kelvin said about the gospel the apostle Paul preached, the blindness of unbelievers in no way detracts from the clearness of his gospel, for the sun is no less resplendent because the blind do not receive it's light. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus, because you loved us. You sent him to be the light of the world, to shine his light, that we may come into the truth and into relationship with you through him, through Jesus, the light of the world. Lord, as you shine, you shine your light into our lives, Lord, we may be seen who we are clearly and may we respond to your great love, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to do a reading. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I like this reading. I like 2 Corinthians. I did preach my way through it at one stage. Yeah, I think I've even marked it. There we go. In Paul speak in his this whole chapter is about treasure in, in uh, clay jars but he says this therefore since god in his mercy has given us this new way we never give up we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods we don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of god we tell the truth before god and all who are honest know this if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see... We don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. And we now have this light shining in our hearts but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Amen.
God is light. And often, traditional explanation of this candle is that the Christ candle symbolises Christ's physical body, the physical candle, and the flame, the wick, is symbolic of him being divine and his spirit, his spiritual side, if you like. God is light, and it says in 1 John, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. What was God's first act of creation? Amen. Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light was good, right at the beginning of Genesis. In fact, light is something that... We can turn on, we can see, and scientists understand a bit about it. Well, what is darkness? Well, darkness basically is just absence of light. Darkness is not really something tangible like light. It's just the absence of light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he says it twice in John's Gospel, chapter 8 and chapter 9, just to make sure they got the point. I am the light of the world. What did he mean? He means that he is the one who is bringing God's light to our dark lives. And when he said this, it was in partly fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. And Isaiah 49, 6 talks about, um, which I won't read it, but it talks about the people of God being a light to the Gentiles, to the Gentile nations. And you can read about that in Isaiah 49.6 and 42.6 and 51.4. It repeats that same theme. So what does light do? Well, light helps us to see. Without light, we are blind. God shines his light through his sun so that we can see who we are and who God is and what he requires of us. Light is also used to signal. When I'm out in the outback, I often have a, a mirror in my emergency pack because a plane can see a signal from just one little mirror from miles away, just a reflection of that sunlight on that mirror and a plane can see you from so miles away. God's greatest signal to us, I believe, is the Lord Jesus himself. It signals to us that God loves us. But the question is, are we listening are we receiving that signal? Are we responding? What else does light do? Well, light guides. It's like a lighthouse. And maybe today you're in need of guidance. You're struggling with an issue. You're struggling with something in your life, struggling with a relationship. Maybe you need guidance. Well, God's like this lighthouse through the Lord Jesus, and he wants to guide us. And as you read his word and pray, he will guide your ways. Light also protects, it shows us danger. So I brought my really bright little flashlight thing here, which, woo! But this, um, this light also does a strobing thing like this, there you are, which, um, if you've got epilepsy, so there was, um, there we go. Light protects, it shows us danger. There was, um, Lynn and I were out at this camp in the, just out from Newman, and uh, in the middle of the night, uh, one of the Aboriginal guys comes up to us and he says he's been bitten by a snake. You know, you do a toilet trip at night, and he didn't have his torch, and something bit him anyway. We rushed him into Newman, actually, we met the ambulance halfway and took him to the hospital. And the upshot was it probably wasn't a venomous snake, if it was a snake at all, and he was okay. But Wandering out at night, we just can't see unless we do have a torch or a lamp. And then we can see where we're going. We see we're not going to stub our toe on, our, on a rock. And the Lord Jesus wants to show us the dangers that face us. And he wants us to avoid them. The light shines into the darkness. And maybe you are unsure of where you're going, unsure of God's will for your life. And maybe your path seems to be in darkness and I say to you, well, if you're in darkness, you're struggling today, then pray. Pray that God's light will shine into that darkness. 
But maybe the darkness is like this. Maybe that darkness is sin in your life. You may be able to hide it from others, but you can't hide it from God and his light will shine into the crevices and corners and smallest parts of your life and shine into those areas of sin that we try to keep hidden from other people. And it will be revealed. Light shows up uh, what is otherwise hidden. God shines his light into our darkest corners. He lights up the sin in our lives and reveals it so that we can deal with it. Too much light, though, can hurt us or harm us. I mentioned that strobe lights and other lights maybe uh, affect people with epilepsy. My that bright light can hurt our eyes. Laser light can actually cut through steel. And when our lives are not right with God, it's like his pure light is sears us. And, and we, we've, we know about our sin, our shame and our guilt, and it's like a heavy burden on us. And his light wants to bring that um, to, to openness so that we can deal with it. Moses had to veil his face to stop the Shekinah glory of God overwhelming those about him. But for some people, the gospel, the shining light of God is veiled from them, as Paul said in our reading. It's not at all that God wants people to miss out on the gospel. It's not so much that the gospel has stopped shining its truth, because it hasn't, but that people's minds are veiled, they're blinded, they're cut off from realising and knowing this truth. In other places, Paul notes that it is our own sin and, and selfishness that blinds us to the gospel, the world and its evil. Ungodly ways that keep us from Jesus. But in our reading today, he lays the blame fairly at the feet of the God of this age, that is Satan, whom Jesus calls the prince of this world. So, brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. Satan is only a temporary God of this age and prince of this world. He is a defeated foe who doesn't realize his time will soon be up. For the Christian, our hope and belief is that we are going in God's grace from this age to the wonderful eternal age to come, the age when we are with God forever. That is our hope. You think about that, the candle of hope there. That is our hope. We're going from this world to a new heavens and a new world. Now, there are people who don't or won't believe the gospel and don't or won't understand the good news you give them. But make sure that the veiling and the lack of clarity isn't on your side. Have you spoken the gospel to them in a language or way that they can understand? When I lived in Kilgardie, I stayed with a mate. We, were, uh, we ran an artifact shop and a few other things, and well, my mate did. And uh, he liked Jack Chick comics. Anyone seen a Jack Chick little comic? Anyone seen one? Well, they're little comic strips. And they're funny little things, but they've all got pictures and they've got a Christian message. And if you can hand out a track with lots of words, people, you know, they chuck them in the bin, don't often read them. But these are little comic strips and people actually read them. We gave them out to hitchhikers and all sorts of people. People read them. And uh, whether they responded or not, well, it's between them and God but they could understand it. The gospel doesn't change, but how you tell it may. How you tell it to leavers may be different to how you tell it to others. Jesus used many ways to get his message across. So have you really related to the person that you are talking to uh, about the gospel in a way they can understand? Because it's not that God wants any to be in darkness or in spiritual blindness. He wants all to be unveiled, to see him as he really is, to see Jesus, the very image and likeness of God, and to let his light shine on us and reveal our sin and show us our need for God, to show us who God really is. So brothers and sisters, let God's light shine into your hearts, into the deepest, darkest recesses there. Because it's not about keeping laws, it's not about being good people or being good enough, it's about God taking over our lives and shining his gospel into our hearts and being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who
who is the Spirit, as the Apostle Paul said. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. It's interesting, in Matthew chapter 5, he says it almost the same, but just one word different, really. He says, you sit on a hilltop, the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father, said Jesus. So we are to be lights as well. We are to be lights for this dark world. And the Apostle Paul follows the same theme. He says, For once you were full of darkness... But now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. And the Apostle Peter says this, You can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. How many pastors does it need to change a light bulb? Well, I don't know. I might have to pray about that. But what about followers of Jesus? How many followers of Jesus does it need to change a light bulb? Well, you know, perhaps we don't need to because we Christians are to live in the light. We are to live in the light. God's wonderful, glorious light. So let his light shine upon you and let his light shine out through you to this dark, needy, lost world that people may be found of God and know his goodness and grace. Now, I got a bit excited this week, I got a bit carried away as I usually do. So I've made some little things to give out. And they look like this and it says jesus light of the world now use your imagination it's supposed to be candle but maybe it looks a bit like a light or something like that no so i've got 50 or so so it's probably enough for one of each family or something like that so we're going to hand them out and uh, as we're doing that i think our musicians are going to come up and give us our last song so bless you all thank you